Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. It's time for our Passover special, so we hope you're ready. Israel is known for its beautiful beaches and its amazing food, but the tiny country is also known for its great basketball. Foreign athletes from around the world come to the Holy Land to play for Israel's top basketball teams. And ILTV reporter Denise Wood has a scoop on what some of them have to say about life in Israel. We're here with Apoel Tel Aviv, one of the most famous basketball teams in Israel. But there's not just Israelis playing for the team, there's actually a lot of Americans. We thought we'd come here and ask them how they liked Passover in Israel and if they love matzah. Apoel Tel Aviv is one of the top basketball teams in Israel, and it's got a lot of history. The team was formed in 1935, and it's known for its amazing wins. But in 2007, Hapoel underwent some major changes. Now, instead of having an owner, it's fan-owned meaning more than 2,000 Israelis who love the team can also say they help manage it. Management is elected. There are general uh, elections among the 2,400 uh, members uh, that are the owners of the team. Every two years we elect uh, our management and uh, the, uh, man the managing uh, system is very transparent. And it turns out the team definitely thinks having fan owners is a good thing. I feel a difference. I think it comes out of their feeling that they own it, they feel like uh, they have influence on the team and the more you're involved, the more you feel connected. People here come for their team, it's not someone else's team, it's, their, it's ours. And in this case, in this sense, it's much different than any other. The team recently added former NBA slam dunk champ Nate Robinson, and they say he's already making a big difference. The spirit since he came is totally different because he have, uh, draws a lot of attention from the fans, not only in our team, but for many other. He was at home, like, just preparing for, for uh, whatever, like for NBA, so um, I just told him to just come over here, you know, and stay in shape. We went to college together. Uh, he lived right down the street from me growing up as a kid, so it just made it easier for me to have one of my homeboys here with me uh, to come out and play. Robinson says he's already loving the team in Israel in general, especially how much Israelis love basketball. The fans are awesome. The fans, they, they cheered the whole time. I love that because, you know, I'm a big energy guy. I love the fact that uh, the fans always show, show love and appreciation, win, lose, or draw. For American players, Israel can feel like a whole new world. And Hapoel's Israeli players do their part to help them feel at home. For Passover, the Israelis even invite the foreign players to come to their home and celebrate the holiday. Here in Apollo Tel Aviv, it's usually fans, but in other teams, players or people from the organization take each each one takes one or two foreigners and they show them the tradition. Once we heard about Americans getting to experience a true Israeli Passover, we had to ask, what do they think of matzah? I warned them from it before. You know, don't 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 abuse it too much because you're gonna get the the signs afterwards and you're gonna be sorry for it. It's like a saltine cracker with no salt. That's it, basically. It was, it was tough to eat. But it was it was good. It's you know taking communion, uh, you know for uh, for Jesus and stuff like that. Or you guys call him Yeshua, so it's pretty fun. So there you have it: dedicated fans, passionate players, and a slight fear of matzah. I'm Denise Wood here with ILTV. The southern Tel Aviv town of Jaffa has long been a symbol of Jewish and Arab coexistence in Israel. And one popular family business is proof of it. The Abu Lafia Bakery is famous for its delicious breads and pastries, but it's also well known for a very special Passover story. Saeed Abu Lafia is here to tell us a touching tale. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. So I understand that Abu Lafia Bakery is actually closed during Passover for a very special reason. Can you True. tell us about that? In 1969, we had a neighbor in, uh, beside the bakery in Jaffa, which had a shoe factory. His name was Rabbi Zaman Stauber. Uh, Rabbi Stauber uh, didn't like the fact and felt bad in seeing lots of Jews waiting in line during Passover. So he was good friends with my grandfather, Said, which I'm called after, named after. He came to my grandfather and asked him, Said, if I would get you money, would you close in Passover? I told him, are you crazy? Do you know how much money we make in Passover? So I asked him, how much? He told me it was the equivalent of the cost of an apartment in Jaffa in one week. He said, if I arrange it, would you close? I said, yeah. A week before Passover, Rabbi Stauber comes to my grandfather with money and with an agreement. He asks him, here's the money, sign that you'll close in Passover. My grandfather signs, 
Let's renovations take vacation, enjoys it. And every year, a week before Passover, Rabbi Stauber would come to him, pay him the money. He would arrange it from different donors and municipality and uh, from himself also. And uh, my grandfather would close. It was this way for five years in a row. In the sixth year, my grandfather went to the rabbi before he got them and said, Rabbi Stauber, I got such a blessing in the rest of the year from closing in Passover, I'll continue closing for free. And since then, we, we continue the, my grandfather's tradition. It's amazing. And so Abu Lafi at that point became very successful as well, right? Yes. It's, uh, a lot, we have lots of uh, uh, clients that are religious. We're kosher, but we don't have a certificate as we open on Saturday. It's different than in New York. And uh, people respect us because of that. And also, although they know we don't have a certificate coming to our place, um, we respect them back by closing Passover and Yom Kippur. Although we have lots of Arab clients and non-Jewish clients as well, but majority is people that do uh, uh, do do Passover. So, how have closed. other businesses in Yafo, you know, reacted to the fact that you guys close on Passover? Has it been positive, negative? They celebrate. They're making more money. <laughs> they're selling what we're not selling. There you go. So you guys are actually doing a favor to yeah, everybody in like the a, area. It's a win-win situation for everyone. <laughs> exactly. So you know, tell us a little bit about your family. I know that you guys have been in Jaffa for uh, generations, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot. The bakery of them. alone has been since 1879. Wow. 137 years. That's what you call experience. And uh, the family itself, we've been documented for uh, nearly 500 years in Jaffa. And we are actually accountable for many uh, monuments that have been built in Jaffa, including bridges and uh, famous buildings by architects and engineers in the family. And it's funny because we talked about this before, but I said that Jaffa is a town that's in south of Tel Aviv, but you told me no. Yeah, Jaffa is, uh, is over 4,000 years old, and it has the oldest operating port in the world. And, you know, Tel Aviv is 100 years old, so, it, so you, you need to respect win. it more. Right. So, you know, why do you think Jaffa has become kind of the symbol of coexistence within Israel between both Jews and Arabs? Jaffa in Arabic is called Im al It means the mother of the stranger. Because of the fact that we had such a vibrant port, we, had, uh, we were accustomed always to lots of immigrants and lots of foreigners coming to the port all the time. So, you know, people uh, got used to uh, foreigners and immigrants and got more... Uh, uh, you could say uh, regular to that, and you know they respected them and didn't have a problem. They weren't afraid of the strange. So you know, over the years, that kind of sentiment kept on, including when the Jews came. And today, we're much more open, and we have a very good coexistence between Jews and Arabs in, in Jaffa. Does your family feel a certain type of responsibility to maintaining that coexistence? Of course, you know it's like, uh, you know, nobody wants bad things happening in Jaffa. It's also bad for business, so let's be honest about it. But also, you know, everybody wants to live in peace. You can see what's happening in the rest of the Middle East. Nobody wants that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming in. No I'm problem. going to come and eat at Abu Lafi again. I've You're already been there several times, the but uh, there we go, on the house. <laughs> Thanks so much. My pleasure. We'd like to end the newscast with a special message from some of the lone soldiers that have traveled across the world to serve in the Israeli army. קוראים לי רונן אבוקרט, משרת בסיירת גולני. עליתי מצרפת, רציתי להגיד חג שמח, בונד פטה טוס. שלום, קוראים לי יערה מארגנטינה. רציתי לאחל לכולם חג שמח. Que tenga mucha felicidad, es que la pasen muy linda con sus familias. Shalom, Kurim Li Yosef Suiza, mi Canada. Que la gente happy holidays. Ay, Kurim Li Igor, me gusta. Hak Sameach le Kulam, es prácnico. Kurim Li Neta Ragovsky, mi Thailand. Y a mi mujer le Kulam, Hak Sameach. Shalom, Kurim Li Marcos, a mi me Brasil, Hak Sameach. Mucho Hak Sameach para todo el mundo, Pesar Sameach. Y eso ahí, yo soy Marcos de Brasil. שלום, קוראים לי ססיה, עולה חדשה מארגנטינה, אני רוצה לאחל לכולם חג שמח, כי אתם גם מוי פליסה פייטה, שהיא דיבר תנסה, לא כאילו. היי, אני אריאל. ואני דניאל שולמן. אנחנו תאומים, ורוצים לאחל לכל אחד חג שמח. חג שמח, חפי פאסובר. עם חג שמח. שלום, קוראים לי מרקוס, אני מברזיל, חג שמח. All right, everybody, that's all for our Passover special today. We wish you a happy holiday, and we'll see you on Sunday for our morning briefing. Chag Sameach.